Here we are on a project building some retaining walls with our sister company, Baylor Brothers, having 35 years of experience building retaining walls, doing paver work. This is a perfect example of how to use GeoGrid and when to use GeoGrid. Obviously anything over four feet, you're gonna wanna get engineered so that you're hitting the right specs. There's a lot of factors, the toe slope of the wall, the back slope of the wall, if you're doing tiered walls. Now in this application, we're gonna be doing a raised patio. We're only two feet high, so you're not looking at like a lot of grade change. There's not a lot of height difference. We're putting in GeoGrid because you'd rather be safe than sorry. And with a patio on top, we don't want any settling of the pavers to the back of the cap. And another crucial part of doing GeoGrid is making sure this is perfectly level. So in this application here, I'm able to take my level, go down through here, make sure this is perfectly level. Sometimes you'll have two or three feet of stone behind your wall, and then you'll have some kind of a fill or infill material in the back. That's perfectly fine. You can also use a laser. That's perfect. That's right where we wanna be. GeoGrid wants to sit perfect. If it's not, or if you have any snares or snags in it, and any bubbling, it will eventually fail that amount. So we'll just roll this out. We want to make sure that the GeoGrid is getting all the way to the front of the wall. You do not want to skimp there. If you were to just put it on the back, this is about a sixteenth of an inch. A sixteenth of an inch over 12, 15, 20, 20 layers can be up to, you know, two or three inches pitching that wall forward. So we'll roll this out. Again, like I said, if it's getting out to the face, we can roll it there. This GeoGrid is not technically holding the block in place. It is actually holding the materials and the soils behind it. This is a soil retention system that's, that's holding those layers and stabilizing over a six foot length. One key element to doing GeoGrid is making sure you're compacting your soils. Obviously in this situation, we have stone and we're gonna compact the stone all the way back when we're doing our GeoGrid, but you may have some fill material back in here. You're gonna to wanna to hit that with a little bit larger plate compactor or even a jumping jack or roller or sheep's foot roller. But compaction is key. It's rattling these stones down in between these joints, making sure to fill those voids so you don't end up with any deviations. Now we're gonna pass it off to Phil to go over the fee angle, also known as the angle of repose. Thanks, Caleb. I appreciate that. We do want to talk about soils. We do want to talk about fee angles, angle of repose. If you've been to a quarry, uh, many of you are familiar. You drive in there, you see these conveyor belts. So you take your conveyor belt, material is being shot off the top of that as it, once it goes through its processing system. But when the soil falls, it falls at this natural angle. That angle right here is called your angle of repose or fee angle. So that soil is stable because of the angle that it drops at in its natural state. If you get moisture to it, that can change it. That's why we like to keep water away from our walls. Gravels are gonna be a lot steeper where clay soils may be a little bit less, especially if you add moisture. So if I'm going to build a retaining wall, what happens behind that retaining wall, this is your natural state of soils that does not need to be stabilized. So that would be your angle of repose here, this angle, that's your angle of repose. That's the natural state. That soil behind here, all this soil in this area is stable. What happens though is we have this section, which is unstable soil. This soil right here needs to be stabilized. And the way we do that is with GeoGrid. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to eliminate this mass of material here, pushing against this wall. If this soil in this area outweighs the wall, it will eventually start to slide and push the retaining wall out. So we're looking to eliminate that. And the way we do that is by stabilizing soils so say I add a layer of GeoGrid in here and a layer of GeoGrid in here. And we'll do one more, layer of GeoGrid here. Now these soils are stabilized. This angle that I hear all of a sudden becomes here. 
it becomes here, and it becomes here. You also have one here, you can keep in mind. Here, and here, and this original one. So now, this soil becomes very stable because it has the geogrid, and the only unstable section is here, here, and here. We're trying to create a massive wall, which is right here, that outweighs your fee angle, because now, basically, with this system, your fee angle is here. Now, I only have this part of soil pushing against this block of reinforced material to put pressure here. And this soil definitely does not weigh near what this system here weighs. So hopefully that can help simplify the way GeoGrid works. We're trying to create a system that outweighs the soil's pressures from behind. So now I'm gonna pass it off to Caleb and he's gonna go over all the different forms of GeoGrid. So a lot of people get confused between the difference of biaxial and uniaxial GeoGrid. So biaxial is good in two directions. So it's good one way, also the other way. It is usually stronger one way than the other, and you can tell by the banding and the way that the banding is and the thickness of it, but it is good for both directions. Biaxial is usually used in a retaining wall situation like this, where you kind of have a corner. Um, it's not really too terrible structural. You're not looking at 15 foot high retaining wall where you want something that's really structural. It can be used in you know, driveways underneath your pavers. Uniaxial is good for one direction. So that's usually used on a retaining wall that you're, you're going back with 15, 16 foot lengths of geogrid. And that, you can tell, is usually has a heavy banding on the one side, and you can always tell which way is stronger uh, than the other by the sizing of the actual threads, as well as the way that it runs uh, continuous through. Uniaxial is usually used in a, in a segmental retaining wall application. Now I'm gonna pass it off to Phil to go over just geogrid as a whole, and then also just some tips and when to use it. Thanks, Caleb. In just an overview, I wanna just relate back to you some of the areas highly recommended for geogrid. Obviously, retaining walls is a big part of it. When building steps or stairs, interlocking the geogrid from side to side and front to back in a set of stairs can stabilize and keep things from spreading over time. Another area for geogrid on a driveway application where you're gonna get repetitive traffic, say in and out of that garage floor, it's a great area to stabilize that soil to reduce that repetitive uh, traffic pattern. It helps to displace load bearing pressure. It's another great place for a geogrid. You can check with your uh, town and whatnot, but a lot of times any walls over three or four feet require an engineer. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to check into to make sure that you're utilizing your resources properly. For sure, you're gonna want geogrid of any wall that's over three or four feet. Anything under that, you have to pay attention to what your soils are, what your load bearing is going to be. If there's vehicular traffic on top of this wall, because I've put grid in even walls that are two feet or less just to stabilize soils if it has a lot of pressure behind that wall. So that's a very good thing to think about just to make sure that we're properly installing these products because if you have a wall failure, that's serious. Pavers, you can pick up a few pavers, re-level, readjust, reset, no problem. But a retaining wall, now you start getting six, seven, eight layers deep, you start getting sags in your wall, that can be a serious problem. So we wanna make sure we're utilizing uh, geogrid to stabilize soils and for longevity of job. Thank you so much for watching this week's tip of the week. Also, go to our website, pavetool.com, see all our products there. Make sure you sign up for our tip of the week and also check us out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Thanks for watching.